Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Monday live stream. So this is a great one. This is a interview with Michael Saylor as he came up on uh, the Squawk Box on CNBC. And, you know, there are few people that I like to listen to to put my mind at ease. And Michael Saylor is one of those individuals. And we, he goes over a whole plethora of different topics. So I just want to, to bring this to everybody's attention. And yes, there is a Bitcoin price prediction in there. It is crazy. So take it with a grain of salt. But again, like these are the people that I listen to to put myself at ease when I feel a little bit anxiousness about the market itself. So let's just jump right into it and go over this piece. So this is about 10 minutes long. I linked the full interview in the description of this video. But the first question that was brought about was MicroStrategy performance and how it's doing against everything else. I got to tell you, it's a pretty solid response about what he talks about. So I'm just going to have him... Take it from here. So just take a listen to what Mike's got to say. But it's been a, a great journey since August uh, 10th of 2020. MicroStrategy has bought about $8.3 billion worth of Bitcoin. And um, mm. Bitcoin's up 44% a year on average since then. The S&P is up 12%. And since we levered it, we're up 825%. The number one performing stock in the S&P is NVIDIA up 821% as of Friday. So we beat every single company in the S&P index using a Bitcoin strategy. Does MicroStrategy now do anything else? We still run the software business, and it's, it's generally a cash cow for us. But our primary business is a Bitcoin development company. So what we're doing is we're securitizing Bitcoin. We're selling convertible bonds for people that don't want the full volatility and all the risk of Bitcoin. And that right there. So, and then he, he goes off on the tangent, uh, which is great, but you can, you can take a listen. And if you're a business, a corporation, institution, and you're listening to this right now, I have to wonder, I really have to wonder if you look at it and say, well, you know, how can we improve our bottom line? How can we increase revenue? And what MicroStrategy did was, was brilliant. They are essentially are a proxy for Bitcoin. And if you really think about it, there's really not much competition for that. Okay, it, it's, 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 it's kind of like this. If, if you have a business, right, and you sell pizzas or something like that, you are Papa John's. You don't like it when Pizza Hut opens up. You don't like it when Peter Piper Pizza, pizza opens up or down, down the street. You're like, damn it, that's competition. But if other companies get into this and they start buying more crypto or more Bitcoin itself, you have to ask yourself, like, where's the competition? It's not. Everybody just keeps buying it up. They keep holding like MicroStrategy is doing. I got to tell you, it's brilliant. So for that piece right there, I have to hand it to you or have to hand it to Michael Saylor about uh, it was a brilliant uh, move for the company itself. They still do things, which is positive, And uh, I like where things are going. So the next piece he's going to talk about, which I have to ask myself sometimes is like, you know, there's do, do the ETFs really make a huge difference? And what about outflows and what about traders and, and just the performance of Bitcoin overall? Because it seems like ETF and we, just, we saw a massive amount of outflows recently. Does it really make a difference? So just take a listen to this piece right here. It's pretty good. It starts at about uh, 304. Let me fast forward there. Right here. Price of Bitcoin. I think generally it's been a good thing and it's created more demand, but you got to keep in mind that Bitcoin is smart, fast, strong money. So on a Saturday night, if you're worried about a missile strike, you can't teleport your $10 million apartment to Singapore, lever it up 10 to one and short $100 million worth of New York real estate. But you can short $100 million worth of Bitcoin by borrowing $10 million. So you have a lot of fast money traders, a lot of volatility, and that will cause and ripple into volatility in the ETFs. Can you explain? That's this? okay. Can you explain? This? And the next part, I mean, he's going to go into that and say, which makes sense, right? Because we know about ETFs and we know that, you know, people get into it, but they will trade that. They will go and it'll make it, vol it'll make it volatile and you can do all these things. But, you know, if you're, I mean, if you're trading with the ETFs, you can make that volatile. But if you have it just with Bitcoin, you can do a whole lot more things. Hopefully and thankfully, a lot of, a lot of the traditional finance or well, I'll say all, but a good portion haven't figured that out yet. They know that they can do these things. I think as things move forward, 
Hopefully it won't be as volatile, but he's right. I mean, if you want to trade 24-7, 365, what's open for that Forex? Uh, besides that would be Bitcoin. And it's not like if you have an ETF, you can do a lot of things. And the next piece, I thought it was pretty good because this is the question that you're going to get a lot. And that question is, well, if it's a hedge against inflation, you, you call it digital gold, but really is it? Because look how volatile it is. Gold's not that volatile. So how can you say that? And I like when we, when we, when he puts these things out because it kind of it kind of strengthen our position when we're talking to people and trying to explain exactly what's going on. So just take a listen here. That's about 353 right here. Fungible free capital market in the world. Your New York apartment's not fungible. It's not liquid. I can't panic sell it. So when there's a short-term panic, Bitcoin is trading really, Isn't really it hard. Supposed to be the opposite. Over the long term, it's up 44 percent right. a year every year, and you can you either get 12 percent from the S and P with right. with VIX vol, or you take three X the vol to get 44 percent. So over the long term, if you're an investor, it's going to be great because it's it's strong capital. Over the near term, if you're a trader, you get lots of arbitrage opportunities. Is it, is it a non-correlated asset people can count on, or is it just a risk on? You know, in the near asset? term, whoever's got the most money can decide whether what it correlates not, or non-correlates. It's like, again, it, it, it I can lever it up right, 20 to 1 on Saturday night, and I can trade it long or short. Hey, Michael. That was good. I, I, I don't want to replay that, but I'd like you to listen to that, that again. When he talks about, well, is it too risky? And he says it very simply. He goes, look. He goes, and we talked about this just a couple of days ago, where he took a look at indices versus stocks versus Bitcoin. And traditionally, you're going to get around 10%, 10.2, 10.7, if you want to go 12% annually, annualized uh, compounding for the amount of gain that you get on an indices like an S&P 500. That's true. There's not that much. There's still volatility, but not as much. He said, you can do that or you can deal with the volatility and get 44%, which is what has been happening year over year. So think about that. I mean, really think about that, about where you want to put your money into and you want to have your money actually work for you a little bit. So, I mean, there's a lot of diversification you can do here. And of course, if you want to do S&P 500, if you want to do real estate or precious metals, I do all those things too. But the majority is in Bitcoin because I believe in where things are going. So I like that response and it kind of helps people to go, oh, well, okay, it's not, I mean, it is digital gold per se, but it is like, and as far as like a store of value, I, I compare it to instead of a short term store of value, like what gold could be, I, I say it's like a long term store of value and it really comes down to how long do you want to hold it. That's why we always talk about the four year cycles, because if you hold it four years, you're doing pretty good. And then the last couple of pieces are pretty interesting. It just talks about performance and then leverage and risk and where things are going. And uh, now I'll just take a listen to this piece right here, which starts about uh, five minutes or so. Let me fast forward just a touch. And here we are. Worst case scenario of, of, of something that would happen in a leverage situation like that with the Bitcoin ETF. I think what happens is people offshore trading on Binance with 20 to 1 leverage get wiped out on Saturday night when there's a, a when there's a potential missile scare. And so they're the degenerate crypto traders. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, what you want is a free open capital market. Everybody can trade it any way they want. And so if you're going to hold it for more than four years, you're going to get superior performance with that volatility. Yeah, I mean, saying the same exact thing. And then the last one I thought was, well, actually, it's not the last one. Before we get to the crazy price prediction, which people love for some reason, I never thought of it this way. And he's going to talk about Gary Gensler. And they asked him, they said, you know, what do you think about Gary Ginzer? Did he put in those 100 hours of research to really understand Bitcoin? Because, you know, he taught this at MIT. He talked about Bitcoin. He taught about Bitcoin and digital assets, XRP as well. But did he do enough? And the, the, the answer was quite surprising, actually. And I never really thought of it that way as far as Gary Gensler and what he's actually done for the crypto space. And before you start shouting at the screen, just just take a listen. It actually makes a lot of sense. I think the conserv uh, this administration has been fairly conservative in their embrace of the crypto economy. Right. They want to go slow, carefully, deliberately. But do they want to go or do they not want to go? Well, um, before Gensler entered office, the rhetoric was, was even more uh, controversial. After Gensler entered office, you heard Jerome Powell, Christina Lagarde, Gary Gensler all say Bitcoin is a is a
speculative digital asset. And that was actually a move forward. With the approval of the ETFs, it was the second move forward. I think clearly we're all waiting for uh, big banks, bulge bracket banks, to start to custody and hold Bitcoin. That'll be the third big shoe to drop. Yeah, so I mean, on this channel, I'll be honest with you, we've, we've somewhat demonized Gary Gensler as the big bad final boss. But if you take a step back and look at it, he did make a little bit of progress. And I'll remind everybody, before we start to throw darts and arrows at uh, Gary's face, if it wasn't for Gary Gensler, because there are five commissioners, he is the chair, if it wasn't for Gary coming in and being the tiebreaker for the Bitcoin ETF, the Bitcoin ETF would not have happened. He was the deciding factor. Now, you can say, well, uh, was it because of you know, his determination and his, his, his thoughtful prowess of what Bitcoin is as far as a commodity, or was he was scared to death of Larry Fink and BlackRock? I have no idea. But regardless, he has moved things forward. Now he's, and, and on that same token, I will also say that he has actually uh, moved some things back in the altcoin space. That is very true. But I never thought of it that way. So, uh, you know, I'll have to give Gary his due if I ever see him. Anyhow, and the last piece, of course, what I think what everybody is uh, waiting for here is the Bitcoin price prediction. And uh, it's insane. And I don't like to give price predictions, but if, uh, you know, if Michael wants to give you one, have at it. So take a listen to this. Starts at 840. Pretty good, actually. And it's about a minute long. Here we go. This will be the last piece, and we'll do a little Q&A. My but view is... Would be Treasury Secretary? I mean... You buy Bitcoin, you hold it for more than four years, Joe. That's my advice to everybody. For anyone buy it and hold it for more than four years. And then you think eventually it takes how much, let's say it is digital gold, what, what percentage of, of gold's market cap does it finally? Uh, you know, Bitcoin's 0.1% of the capital in the world right now. I think it's going to go to 7% of the capital. 7% My long-term forecast is it's going to go to 13 million over 21 years. 13 million. 13 million. But what, what is it five years from now? You're, in your four-year calculus. You know, it's been growing 44% a year so with about a 40 to 50 vol. I would think it'll, it'll move on at uh, 40 percent then click down to 35 then 30 then 25 and at some point it'll be the s p return plus eight percent and it'll be the s p vol plus eight percent because it's always going to be a more global open free capital market and that is why i named this video we are still early and we are still early can you imagine in like 10 years when people are talking about, you know, Bitcoin's doing pretty good, 8% plus volatility, but, you know, S&P 500 is doing this, and, you know, whatever, but it is, a, it is a global asset. And then those people a decade from now are going to talk about us, but like, can you believe those guys were getting like 44, 45, 50% gains in a year? And then sometimes it was like 200, 300%, and that was just on Bitcoin. And then, of course, we have this, you know, this global CBDC called tomato coin or whatever it is. And that went up, you know, what 10,000% or whatever, whatever actually happened. So when people say, ah, eh, we're not really at early, just wait. Cause in 10 years, people are gonna look back at us and be like, I can't believe they held for that long. That's it for today. So look, I love these types of videos because it like, I'm a pretty calm individual, but when I see somebody like, uh, like uh, sailor come out and say, you know, it's because of this, cause of this, cause of this even makes me even more relaxed. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. Now, if you want to stick around, we'll do a little Q&A. And uh, I'll answer all the questions your best or my abilities. But if you got to take off, take off. Enjoy the rest of the day wherever you're at.